Here begins tape number one in the videotape deposition of Donald J. Trump in the matter of Trump Old Post Office LLC versus CZ National LLC and BVS Acquisition Co. LLC in the Superior Court of the District of Columbia, case number 2015CA005890B. Today's date is June 16th, 2016. The time on the video monitor is 9.59. The videographer today is Zach Arnson Serrata, representing Planet Depots. This video deposition is taking place at 1217th Street Northwest, Washington, D.C. Would counsel please voice identify themselves and state whom they represent? Rebecca Woods, uh, counsel for Trump po Old Post Office. I also have with me Alan Garten, general counsel for the Trump Organization. Deborah Baum. Uh, counsel for the defendants, uh, C CZ National LLC and BVS Acquisition Company LLC. The court reporter today is Debbie Whitehead, representing Planet Depots. Would the reporter please swear in the witness? Can you raise your right hand? Yes. Do you swear the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. <coughs> Good morning, Mr. Trump. And again, thank you, thank you very much for being here. Thank you. Uh, would you state your full name for the record, please? Donald John Trump. Okay. And I imagine you've had your deposition taken a number I of times. I have, time. yes. So you know the drill. And I, I do. Won't waste anyone's time going through it. Good, thank but you. Do know that if you need to take a break, I'm happy to let you in. Very good, break. thank you. <coughs> uh, what do you do to prepare for the case today, for the um, deposition? I would say virtually nothing. I, I spoke with my counsel for a short period of time. I just arrived here and. Uh, we proceeded to the deposition. Thank you. So you didn't look at any documents or? No, I didn't. Anything. And of course, I don't want to know what you talked about with your counsel. Let me quickly have this marked as the next deposition exhibit, which I believe is 182. And then this time, remember, sorry, to bring a copy for you, Alan. Uh, Trump, that's the notice of your deposition, actually yes. technically the second amended notice. Um, at the very last page, page 8, there is a list of documents requested. Uh, did anyone ask you to look for documents related to this case? I believe my lawyer did, and he looked for them with my secretaries. Do you keep handwritten notes? No. I think your uh, daughter told me in her deposition that you don't email, and I observed that that's because you're a very smart person. Yes. we've figure that out. It took a lot of people a long time to figure <laughs> that out. That's right. But um, do you make notes? Do you have anything on paper related to this case? No, I don't. What, what do you know about this case? What's your understanding of this case, other than anything your lawyers told you? Well, it's a restaurant uh, with a good name and a good reputation. And by it, do you mean uh, Mr. Zakarian's restaurant? Yes, or? yes. Um, and uh, we worked long and hard and spent a lot of money, even in the legal fees, to get a lease signed. Uh, it was a very prime spot in the building. Uh, I actually think he made a mistake by not doing it, because I think he would have done well there. Uh, but a very prime spot in the building. and. Ultimately, it got signed. I believe my son Don worked on it for the most part, but uh, I haven't been involved in it almost at all. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, we were happy to have him in the building. What do you know about the lawsuit? Well, I just know that they canceled uh, the lease, uh, I guess based on the fact I'm running for office, and they thought I made uh, statements that were inflammatory in some form, and uh, they, I don't know if they sent out a notice. I, th I think what was maybe worse than sending out a notice, they went to the press. Uh, and essentially, it became a press deal, but they, they uh, tried to get out of their lease. I assume at some point they sent us a notice or whatever. I don't know. I don't, I don't think I've ever seen the notice, but I know it's been terminated anyway. They terminated the lease in their mind. What do you mean in their mind? Well, I mean, they, they wanted to get out of the lease, so they sent us a notice. But uh, we, uh, we feel, you know, we have a lease. 
How do you think they wanted to get out of the lease? Objection. I don't. Sorry, objection. Foundation. I don't understand why uh, why they did this. I'm running for office. I obviously have credibility because I now, as it turns out, became the Republican nominee uh, running against, uh, we have a total of 17 people that were mostly senators and governors, highly respected people. Um, so it's not like, you know, like uh, I've said anything that could be so bad because if I said something that was so bad, they wouldn't have had me go through all of these people and win all of these primary races and I'm pretty even in the polls or close to even in the polls right now. So, um, so I was very surprised that he wanted to get out of the lease. Did you have any understanding at the time of the termination as to why he wanted to get out of the lease? I wasn't too much involved in it. It was mostly my son and daughter who you know. Okay. Um, have you had any conversations with either, um, well, with not just your children, but any of your internal uh, Trump team regarding this lawsuit? No. No, not at all other than Mr. Garten for a couple of minutes. So. And I, I'm not asking about yeah, what you talked with okay. him about because he's your counsel. But no, I haven't really discussed it. Okay. Have you had any discussions with Ivanka or Donald Jr. at all about this dispute? Uh, other than they said, uh, that I guess he wanted to get out, and that was a while ago. Since then, I haven't discussed it. I didn't even discuss their deposition that I assume they took with you based on your statement. Um, are you the ma you're the majority owner of the old post office entity, yes. correct? Do you know what percentage you own? Um, Beneficially or directly? Well, I, my children have a piece. We own 100 percent as a company. Mm -hmm. uh, my, uh, my children have a piece of it. And. Um, who is, uh, but are you, but you personally are the majority owner oh, or yes. beneficial owner of yes. the entity? Yes. Okay. Do you know what percentage you own? I guess it's close to 80 percent. Who's the decision maker for the old, tr the Trump old post office entity? Um, I would say in this case Ivanka and Don. I am ultimately, but I, I rely on them to make the decisions. Um, has that changed over time? I think as they've become older and wiser, I give them more and more decision-making ability. But, uh, but they have the right to make a decision, yes. At the outset of the Trump Organization's desire to pursue a lease from the GSA for this property, were you principally in charge at that point in time? Uh, my daughter mostly was involved, uh, Ivanka, I would say more than anybody else. Um, what's your vision for the old post office hotel project? Well, I think it's going to be a beautiful project. Uh, we're, uh, we're opening fairly soon. Uh, too bad we don't have the restaurant in it. We would have liked to have had the restaurant. We think it would have been good for the hotel. But we'll, we'll be opening soon, and um, it'll be a luxury hotel, hopefully one of the great hotels of the world. It's, the building is spectacular, uh, but the building is uh, really spectacular, and the construction has come out very well. Has your vision for the hotel project changed over time? Not too much, other than uh, the restaurant, actually, and the restaurants. Um, not too much. And when you say the restaurant, you mean the Zakarian yes. restaurant? Yes. And there, there were originally going to be two restaurants, right. one in the Cortiles Correct. Central Space, Correct. the Jose Andres restaurant. Yes. And you now have BLT. BLT, yes. And no restaurant in the northwest corner, which no. was going to be the Zakarian space. We didn't have time. I would have rather had a restaurant. We just didn't have time to do it. How would you describe the Trump brand? Uh, a luxury brand. I think it's a brand where people know we get things done. Uh, it's a very successful brand and um, does well. Around the world? Around the world, yes. And is it fair to say that you are the person largely responsible for building that brand? Yeah. And is it fair to say that you are the individual mostly associated with that brand? Objection.
Yeah, I mean, yes, and I think my children are coming more and more into it. Ivanka, probably, in particular, but they're coming more and more into it. Okay. Mark, next exhibit. Oh. Mr. Trump showing you what's been marked as Exhibit 183. Um, these are materials uh, we got from your website. And uh, you're free to, but I don't mean to ask you to take your time to read the whole thing. But toward the end, it says Mr. Trump is personally involved in everything that his name represents. Um, this commitment has made him the preeminent developer of quality real estate known around the world, and in all his endeavors, the Trump gold standard is apparent. See that? Yes. Um, is that a true statement? Yes. And when it says that um, you're personally involved in everything that your name represents, um, what does that mean, that your name represents? Well, I think that, you know, I do things that don't necessarily have my name on it but I'm involved with, uh, when we put our name on a hotel, such as this one, which is very important, I'm very much involved in the details. I was involved in the design of the building and the room sizes and the entrances and the <coughs> lobby and the marble and uh, the bathrooms and the fixtures and uh, the bars and a lot of things. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm involved very much with the hotel. The, the important projects, I get very much involved. And I imagine that's an important matter of pride to you because yeah. you know your name and you are associated with that brand. That's right. Um, have you put a value on the Trump brand? It's hard to value. Uh, uh, there, there, people put values on it um, and you hear all different values. Uh, so uh, it would be, you know, I just, I just wouldn't want to know. I guess uh, uh, Forbes, for instance, in their magazines, they say they don't value brands. Um, others do value brands. Coca-Cola, as an example, or Pepsi-Cola. I think they have most of their company is the value of their brand, not the value of the trucks or plants. Uh, so I don't know. It's uh, something that comes up on occasion, but. Uh, I never know quite how to answer that question because I think it's a very valuable brand, but I wouldn't really know how to answer the question. Um, have you had valuations done of the brand? I don't know. I, I don't think I've seen one, but uh, I think there was one done for the company a while ago. Do you know what it was? It was over $2 billion, I believe. What do you think drives the success of your hotels? Good management and great locations and great buildings. We have great buildings and we have, they're in great locations and uh, we have very good management. What impact do you think your political campaign has had on the success of your hotels? I don't think it's had much. Uh, people have been coming to the hotels for a long time and uh, I mean, I could tell you uh, one one example where it's actually been very positive is in uh, in Florida, Mar-a-Lago. Uh, it's had a very positive impact. And the manager told me recently. He said, "Boy, it's the best. Uh, it is actually the best year we've ever had at Mar-a-Lago." Mm -hmm. And I was looking at the numbers. I said, "What do you attribute this to?" He said, "The campaign." I mean, he's he said that, and we've had that elsewhere. So. But overall, I'd say it's fairly steady with, you know, it's, uh, I don't think it's had a uh, huge impact one way or the other. Mm -hmm. uh, where it has had um, a, the positive impact that but, you've described, yeah. what do you attribute that to? I don't know. I mean, it's just, uh, well, this is in Palm Beach. You know, the example I gave is in Palm Beach, and um, it's a pretty political place. Uh, you know, people want to be involved maybe in the process. I don't know what it is. But I think, you know, overall, it's, it's, it could even be a positive impact on, on the facilities as opposed to neutral. Um, I, I don't, you know, I don't know exactly. Uh, if you were to ask me, I would say more positive than anything else. And do you attribute that to the extent it has an effect? It's because people associate you with the hotels and 
they want to be a part of your political yeah, campaign maybe. to the extent they're favorably disposed? Well, maybe <laughs> the success of the campaign. You know, mm -hmm. people have said there's never been anything like this. Um, O'Reilly said the other night, I did something to the effect that this is one of the great phenomena that he's ever seen in his lifetime, you know. So, I mean, it's it's been pretty amazing. You, you have 17 people and, and I end up at the top of, you know, one of the two parties. So I don't know how it's going to happen from here. We'll see. I mean, we're going to know in five months, right? But but uh, it's been, you know, it's been a lot of wins. We've we've beaten a lot of people, and I think people like that. So I think it's had a. Uh, I think it, it'll be great for the building in question, uh, and uh, I think we would have really been helped if we had that extra, you know, that restaurant that we wanted to have very much. I think it would have made the building more successful. And I think he would have done well. Mm -hmm. uh, there have been a couple of reports that have suggested that the campaign has had a pretty strong negative impact on your hotels. I'm going to ask you to just take a look at them, see if you've seen these before. Would you mark this one? One eighty four. And here's another one eighty five. Are you familiar with the survey that's described in the Forbes article, which is marked as Exhibit 184? No, no I'm not. I've never seen. I, I haven't seen the article. I haven't seen the survey. Okay. Has anyone talked to you about the survey, which no. apparently showed that 45 percent of people said they'd make a specific point of not visiting a Trump-branded hotel or golf properties over the course of the next four years? No, I haven't seen it. And uh, similarly, is the answer the same with respect to Exhibit 185, um, which describes a study by Hipmunk, which I will confess I've never heard of. I've it never says heard it, of it either. It says it caters to younger people, and that may be why. Let's query why they published the study. Pardon? Query why they published the study. <laughs> anyway. I've never, I've never seen it. <coughs> Okay. This one, the Hipmunk study says that the hotel bookings dropped more than 59 percent in 2016 compared to the same period in 2015. Is that accurate? No, uh, no, it's not accurate. Okay. It's not accurate. No, we're doing. I think we're doing very well. Okay. Have you had conversations with your team internally about the impact, if any, of the campaign? No. On the hotels. No, I have not. When did you first hear of uh, Jeffrey Zakarian, Mr. Trump? Actually through uh, my son, Don, um, and maybe Ivanka, but through my son, Don, who said, he, you know, good reputation, good restaurateur, uh, and that they were close to signing a lease with him after a pretty long negotiation. Okay. So you didn't you hadn't heard of him until they told you we're close to having the deal done. You weren't involved earlier. That's right. And apart from anything you've learned in this case, what do you know about Mr. Zakarian? Not much. Anything? No, I mean, I really don't. I just know he has, operates a good restaurant. Have you ever been to any of his restaurants? No, I have not. Okay. Um, and do you know anything about Lou Ceruzzi? No. Um, beginning, uh, your, do you know in placing it in time when you first heard about the negotiations with Mr. Zakarian or his entity? A while ago. I, again, Don handled the negotiations. The only thing I knew is that he, uh, uh, he told me he's negotiating with Zakarian. And did you approve of those negotiations? Yeah. And was that in the 2014 time frame? Yes, yes. Prior to the signing of the lease. And uh, do you know when the lease was signed? No. Okay. 
show you what's been marked, or it has not yet been marked. Please mark this, it's 186. Mr. Trump, um, 180, Exhibit 186 is, um, looks like a press release that was issued by your organization, the Trump Hotel Collection, Kay. in September 2013. And does your organization put out press releases like this from time to time? Yes. Kay. This one, Exhibit 186, uh, describes at the top um, that you uh, Donald Trump Jr., Ivanka Trump, and Eric Trump um, unveiled the details of the plans uh, for the development of the old post office. Okay. Uh, do you recall putting this press release out? Well, I wouldn't have done it. Uh, this was done by probably the PR people with my, uh, my children. Okay. Um, on the second page, second paragraph beginning construction is scheduled to begin. Right. It says construction scheduled to begin in spring 2014 with an expected completion in late 2015. Okay. okay. Uh, was that accurate at the time? Mm, perhaps. Yeah. We're, we were very much ahead of schedule. We're ahead of, we're actually ahead of schedule. Um, and we also went higher end than we even thought in terms of finishes and materials. Mm -hmm. So we, we were thinking about uh, completion sometime at the end of 2015. We wanted to take a little bit more time and make it you know, just perfect because we're so far ahead of schedule, mm -hmm. which was, I think schedule was 18, actually. What do you mean by schedule was 18? Meaning, what schedule? Um, we, wanted to, we wanted to have it built prior to 18. We originally had, you know, you had to be open. I think it was 18 as a specific date. Uh, and we're going to be opening in 16. Is that why I've seen things that say, for example, we're two years, we're opening yeah. two years ahead of schedule? Yeah, we're, we're substantially ahead of schedule. Okay. Uh, at what point did you change or make the decision to change the expected completion date from the end of 2015 to um, late in 2016. Oh, I don't think it was a big, a big change. We just, we went, we actually went more upscale. Um, we went um, a little more complicated design. The finishes were better, take longer to install. Uh, we went with the highest grade of marble. It takes a little bit more time. Even to get the material takes a little bit more time. Apart from the cost of the higher quality materials, um, how much, w was that a very costly decision for you to make, just the delay in opening? No, not really, because it was a very, um, you know, it was just a, a, a vast, you know, pretty big period of time. weren't sure exactly when. You never know until you really get, especially with renovation, you never know until you get into the job. Uh, yeah, the material costs more money than we uh, than we were originally going to spend. Well, I, I mean, really, apart from not talking about the cost of the enhanced materials or the new designs, uh, isn't it the truth that just the delay in opening would have cost you a lot? Well, or I is it the case that you had so much viewed, buffer? I never viewed 15. I always viewed uh, we would open sometime toward the end of 16. Mm -hmm. I think much more so than 15. But so that delay didn't cost you particularly? No, I, I, we never thought of it. I, I've, I always viewed it as being a 16. To do it properly, uh, 16 would be you know, something during the year 16. Uh, so your son Donald, I think you told me a few minutes ago, um, told you about conversations with Mr. Zakarian or his, uh, if I say Mr. Zakarian, you understand that the lease is with an entity. Right, uh, sure. His right. entity, the, in the same way that your lease is a okay. Trump entity. Okay. Uh, did you have any understanding about the key business points in the lease negotiations? No, I didn't. Did they tell you how they were going? Was there any issue? No, never did. Just, we have a deal. Just, we have a deal? We have a deal. They okay. said, 
we just signed the lease, we have a deal with uh, Zakarian. Okay. Uh, so they said, we just signed a lease and we have a deal? Don did. He told me when they signed the lease. I don't know when that was, but that was a while ago. But he told me uh, we have a signed lease for the restaurant. Okay. Um, do you remember anything else he told you about the lease? No, not at all. Do you remember whether it had a guarantee, whether there was a letter of credit? He told me there was a letter of credit. I think he told me there was a guarantee. I think he discussed, he just, this was a while ago, he discussed a couple of the points of the deal. Mm -hmm. And most importantly, he said, a, a you know, good quality person mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and restaurant. Mm -hmm. and when you say he discussed a couple of the points of the deal, do you remember what any of those were? Uh, the basic rent and the, um, the guarantee, um, the restaurant. They showed me a rough sketch of uh, what was, you know, conceivably going to be built. Mm -hmm. But that's a very, very short conversation. I said, fine, I have confidence in him. Mm -hmm. And he liked it, so I liked it. Okay. Uh, was the guarantee important to you? Yeah, it was because I think we would have been able to, you know, then we had plenty of time. It wasn't like we were rushed like we are now. Uh, I think that you know, we wanted to have a guarantee because we would have been able, I'm sure, to get another restaurant. And, you know, we want to make sure if we, once we have the restaurant, we'll work hard to make that restaurant successful. We'll help the restaurant. I think the hotel would be very good for the restaurant. But uh, the guarantee, yeah, it's important. And it's pretty, pretty standard. I think it's pretty, I mean, it's a negotiated point, but it's pretty standard. Mm -hmm. And why is it important to you? I want to make sure you mean the guarantee of the rent. Right. I want to make sure I get my rent because we're giving up a space, and you want to make sure you get the rent. And did you focus on the fact that this was a lease deal instead of a management deal? Yes, he told me it was a lease deal instead. Uh, was that significant to you? Yes. Why? I'd rather have a lease deal. It's, Why? Uh, it's a better deal. Why? Because uh, they pay rent and it's assured as opposed to a management deal, which you never know how it's going to work out. What do you mean you never know how it's going to work out? You don't. I mean, a management deal, you never know how it's going to work out, whereas a rent, you know what your rent is. You can, that's why the combination of a rent and a guarantee is a good deal, if you can, if you can make it. I'm just, I'm not trying to be difficult, I just, I'm having trouble understanding your answer. When you say a management deal, you never know how it's going to work out. What do you well, mean? Well, if you have, if you do good business, that's fine. But in, with a management deal, if you do bad business, you, you don't do well. You can lose money. With rent, you just get your rent automatically every month. It's much and simpler. And with restaurants, you never know how you're going to do. Honestly, you never know. That's true. <coughs> okay. All right. Um, show you, Mr. Trump, a copy of what's been marked as Deposition Exhibit 25. Um, Council, this is the copy of the lease that um, was, I think, that you used in Jeffrey Zakarian's Kay. deposition. It's mm -hmm. Exhibit 25, and it's uh, the Trump documents that were produced, we noticed that there are some duplicate pages in it for some reason. The co I think the court reporter wanted may have to make it look bigger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was very impressive. It does look bigger, so but I'm it looks like a big lease. So I'm going to apologize in advance, Mr. Trump, for showing you. I, but right. I think some of the they said they took some of the extra pages out, but there may be some duplicate pages That's in okay. there. Um, here you go. Thank you. And I have extra copies here. <coughs> So this is Exhibit 25. Um, if you look at my, my understanding, the reason I was puzzled by your answer earlier about your son telling you the lease had been signed, my understanding is that you signed this lease. And if you look at that's page. Well, that's true. Okay. He asked me, yeah. OK. Yeah, well, I, I, did, I believe I signed the lease. Okay. But he came in and said, we're signing the lease. So he said, I'll we've, change we're it. signing yes. it. Because I, I think I signed it. Okay, I'll tell it's you in a second. Topo 001968. Take a look there. Yeah, that's my signature, yes. Okay. And 
Did you review the lease at all before you signed it? No. So did you have any understanding when you signed the lease as to what your rights were relative to getting damages against the tenant in the event of a default by the tenant? No, when I signed the lease, but, you know, my son said we have the lease, so uh, I signed the lease. Uh, but really, they knew it much better than I did. I wasn't involved in the lease. I signed it, but I wasn't involved in it. Uh, and how, how many leases like this have you reviewed in your career? Uh, signed or reviewed? Reviewed. Not too many. I signed hundreds, much more than that. Uh, but I don't generally review them. I have somebody that, whether it's an executive or, in this case, uh, one of my children, um, you know, I rely on people to do these things, including lawyers that I've had for many years, like a Mr. Garten or somebody. So I rely. So I, I very rarely get too involved in that. I, I will sometimes get involved in the rent, what the rent should be, and maybe if there's a guarantee or not a guarantee, which is a major event. Yeah. But, but for the most part, I'm not involved in the details of the lease. Okay. So I take it that, for example, if you would turn to page 1933, section 23D. Okay. Okay, got it. Yeah. Uh, you did not review this section what of the lease, monetary damages. These, this is the in the remedies section. I did not, no. Okay. Um, would you be able to read this section and tell us what your understanding of it is? Objection. Mr. Trump isn't a lawyer. I mean, do you want me to read it? Uh, it's, it's long. It is long. It's very long. It is long. I would, um, I would like you to read just the monetary damages section, starting at um, the number one in the middle of the page. Just there. The rest of that, and to the end of that, it's on, it continues on the next page. And tell me what you think. Reading that, you as the landlord are entitled to get from the tenant in the event of a tenant breach in the way of damages. I don't have my glasses. I mean, I, I am at a disadvantage because I didn't bring my glasses. This is such small writing. All right, well, um, <coughs> well, if the witness can't actually physically read the language, I that's mean, a problem. I mean, it's very but small writing. I, I, can, I can make it out. Do you want me to try? Well, I'm, I'm so, we can have, Let's you know what it. we can do? We can have a bigger copy made of these pages. Let me we'll try, let me just do it. it. I have to place on the record a hearty objection. Yeah, it's all damages that the landlord may sustain, including all legal fees and everything else involved. Looks like everything in the kitchen sink to me. And you have number two. It's the value of the positive difference with the aggregate amount of the base rent and the additional rent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, basically, it's saying you have to pay all damages, and going forward, you have to pay uh, rent and other things. I mean, it's a complex clause, but it's, uh, it's, it's a pretty standard damages clause. Okay. I think you'll find. Would you agree with me that it says here in part two, in the uh, you know, you have an alternative that you can either elect to recover in the way of well, rent. Well, the, the landlord can elect. The landlord, yes, you, the landlord, can either elect a sum that at the time of the cancellation represents the positive difference, if any, between the aggregate amount of the base rent and additional rent that would have been payable. So what the tenant would have paid under the lease, right? 
So the difference between that, right. right, and then if you go over to the next page. Or. For, uh, and now this is minus, so the difference right. between everything you would have paid minus the aggregate rental value of the demise premises for the same period discounted to present value. Okay. Okay. So what do you understand the aggregate rental value to be? Objection. Well, we're getting no rental value now. I'm not sure that we could have rented it. I, I don't know that we could have rented it, um, but we're getting no rental. It was it was not an easy space to rent, to be honest with you. Um, and he, you know, he paid. He agreed to pay rent, uh, and he agreed to take the responsibility of the restaurant, which is important because we didn't want to have losses. Mm -hmm. And um, so this would be the rent that he's paying. Mm -hmm. uh, less some kind of a rent that we get. I don't know that we could have gotten a rent. Okay. It says the rental value. Do you know what the rental well, those value Well, the rental value. Objection. So you'll have to find out what is the rental value. But, right. but the rental okay. value. Do you know what the rental value is? No. Okay. No. All right. Then let's turn, if you would please, Mr. Trump, to um, page 1939 regarding the letter of credit. Uh, Quick question on that one. Okay. I won't make okay, you read it. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Uh, did you ever read this section of the lease no. on the security deposit guarantee letter of credit? No, I didn't. Okay. Uh, in section four of the sublease, um, you can look at it if you like, but did you understand that the tenant agreed to use and occupy the demise premises for a first class, in all respects, restaurant? Yes. Okay. And you understood that that was an obligation that the Zakarian entity had? That's right. And uh, did you also understand in Section 36D of the lease that the tenant agreed to hire and maintain reasonably adequate personnel for the efficient service of its customers? Yes. Uh, do you understand, as a, as a businessman, understanding you're not a lawyer and I don't want to know what your lawyers told you, but do you generally understand that in every contract and particularly in every lease, uh, there is a covenant of good faith and fair dealing on the part of both parties implied into every lease? I don't know how you define that. I mean, I just don't know. I, mean, I, I just know we have a lease that said you're going to occupy a premises. We took it off the market. We thought we had a deal. We had a deal for quite some time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, he just didn't live up to his deal. But my question is, do you understand that there is a duty of good faith and fair dealing that's implied on to the part of both parties in every I don't know. Deal? I mean, I don't know. I want a fair deal. I just don't know what the lease is. Do you agree generally that regardless of what's specifically written in the lease, you as the owner can't then interfere with the tenant's right and duty to do what he's required and entitled to do under the lease, which is operate and profit from a successful restaurant? I just don't know what the lease says. I just, it's a very big lease. I, I don't know what the lease says. Yeah. On that. Well, my question, uh, sir, respectfully, was that apart from what the lease says, whatever the lease says, do you understand that you can't then go and just interfere in some way with the tenant's right and obligation to open and profit from a successful restaurant? Objection calls for a legal opinion. I just don't know. I, I mean, we're not interfering. We didn't interfere. We gave him the premises. He chose not to take the premises. And, you know, so I mean, I haven't interfered with him. Um, as a business person, do you understand that uh, you could, well, strike that. Um, is it your understanding as a business person that you could go and announce outside Mr. Zakarian's restaurant that he's a terrible chef? Objection. 
I think I could do that, actually. I mean, you know, if he, if he, let's say he was doing a bad job, let's say he opened a restaurant, he wasn't doing a good job, and somebody asked me, I think I could probably say I didn't like his restaurant. Uh, that doesn't mean I'm right or wrong, but uh, I could probably say that. And he could counter me, but I, but he'd still, he'd still be paying his rent and still be serving and still would have control over the premises. Uh, do you think that you could go stand outside his restaurant and say, you'll get food poisoning if you eat here, don't eat here? Objection. Probably could say that, but I wouldn't say that, but I probably could say that. And when you say you could say that, you could say it without violating any duties under the lease? I don't know what Objection. the lease says. It calls for legal opinion. Mm -hmm. also calls for speculation. Mm -hmm. I just don't know what the lease says. Mm -hmm. but if know, once you have a lease, you know, when you have a lease, you have a lease, and uh, I, I just don't know what the lease says as to that. Mm -hmm. I will tell you, the lease d doesn't specifically mm -hmm. say you can't go stand outside and say you can't eat here, and the lease doesn't say you can't do any of these things. So just assuming the lease doesn't specifically address it, is it your testimony that you could say, stand outside his restaurant saying, don't eat here? You as the owner. Well, over the, over the years, I've seen many, many landlord-tenant disputes, mm -hmm. and I've seen horrible things said both ways, but, I, but, the la but the tenant is never released from paying his rent. Mm -hmm. I've seen unbelievable disputes where people are fighting like cats and dogs, and uh, the tenant keeps paying the rent. Mm -hmm. Well, the question is, though, could you stand outside his restaurant say, uh, with a sign saying, do not eat here? Speculation, legal conclusion. I just don't know. I really don't know. I, okay. I guess I could. If, you know, he's got to pay his rent, and he would have to challenge me mm -hmm. or go to court to have the sign removed. Mm -hmm. Normally what would happen in a case like that is you'd go to, you would be hired, you'd go to court to get the sign removed. But you think you would be within your rights to do it, as far as the lease is concerned, and your obligations as a landlord? Well, okay. I think he'd have to pay his rent, yeah, and he could go to court and have me take down the sign. Okay. Um, do you think that you, under the, uh, in terms of your obligations as the owner of the property, do you think that you could put out statements saying that Mr. Zakarian is a racist? Objection. Yeah, I guess if, if he was a racist, I could. If he, mm -hmm. if he was a racist, I could do that. Do you think that would impact his ability to uh, run and profit from successful restaurants? That I don't know. I mean, he's got a lease. He's got to, I, I don't know. Uh, mm -hmm. That he's got a lease. He's got to pay his, he's got to pay his rent. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, the, you know, you, you can't, if somebody says, that would mean that every document ever signed, if somebody gets into a verbal dispute, that would mean all of, the many leases all over this country would be terminated because somebody has, you know, got into a verbal dispute. I mean, it, that would mean uh, arbitrators would have to be set up for what is a verbal dispute. You know, just you, you couldn't, you wouldn't have a country of laws. I mean, it would be a it would be a mess if you went by a standard like that. He's got a lease; he pays his rent. Mm -hmm. He can go to court and challenge me. He can go to court and sue me. He can sue me for libel if I said something like that. But I think he'd have to continue to operate his restaurant and pay his rent. Mm -hmm. um, uh, similarly, would your answer be the same with respect to uh, assuming that you went out, stood outside his restaurant and said that Mr. Zakarian was anti-Hispanic? Do you think that would interfere with his ability to operate a successful no, restaurant? He'd go to court and he'd have, the, he'd have me taken you know, the sign down or whatever, however method you want to talk <coughs> about. But you'd go to court and you'd ask for a judgment that I would, uh, I would take down the sign. Do you think if the word got out that Mr. Zakarian were anti-Hispanic, that it would affect the, potentially affect the success of his restaurant? I don't know. I don't know. I really don't know. Okay. Um, you understand, I'm sure, that what brings us together today is the um, decision that Mr. Zakarian and his entity made in the wake of the comments that you made when you announced your candidacy for president in June 2016. Okay. Um, and uh, we have the transcript of what was said, but I don't, I don't think we need to go through all of it, but 
specifically focusing on the comments about Mexicans and immigrants and making comments about Mexicans. Illegal immigrants, yes, illegal. Okay. And I understand. Which is a very big topic in this country. And which is a topic that, you know, has led to my nomination in a major party in the country. So it's not a very out there topic. With respect to the speech that you made, and specifically the focus on Mexicans and immigrants, uh, did you write the statement in advance? Was it written? No. And um, did you plan in advance what you were going to say? Yes. Okay. Did you talk to other people about it? No. Did you um, give any thoughts to the effect that your statement relative to Mexicans and immigrants would have on tenants in your current or future projects? No. No, I didn't. I didn't at all. Okay. Uh, you believe your comments have been misinterpreted by the media, correct? Um, perhaps so, yeah. I think the media is very dishonest. Um, but all I'm doing is bringing up a situation which is very real about mm -hmm. illegal immigration. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, you know, most people think I'm right. And would you agree that you, you've taken the position that the media has misinterpreted your comments and liberal groups have misinterpreted your comments? Well, I don't know. Some have misinterpreted them, some haven't. I mean, so the voters, I don't think, have. Okay. I got more votes than anybody in the history of the Republican Party primaries mm -hmm. by a lot. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's pretty mainstream when you think about it. You have definitely tapped into something. Something, right? Mm -hmm. It's um, possibly a, possible that I'll help him as opposed to help him. Help who? If he had the restaurant, it would be helped as opposed to hurt. Why do you think that? Because you just said it. I mean, I've tapped into something, and uh, I've tapped into illegal immigration. I've tapped into other things also. But, you know, when you get more votes than anybody in the history of the party, in the history of the party by far, more than Ronald Reagan, more than Richard Nixon, more than Dwight D. Eisenhower, mm -hmm. who won the Second World War, mm -hmm. um, you know, that's pretty mainstream when you think about it. Mm -hmm. There have been a number of businesses that have terminated their relationships with you in the wake of particularly the comments regarding Mexicans and immigrants, correct? Uh, well, there was uh, not like no extension. Macy's was an example. No extension. It, I'm not even sure we had a deal with Macy's, but, uh, but we ceased that relationship, yes. Mm -hmm. And they publicly attributed it to the comments regarding Mexican I don't know. Senator. I think so, yes. And uh, would the same be the case for Univision? But I didn't have a lease with Macy's. Right. Okay. I didn't have a lease. You know, I didn't have a, that kind of a deal. It was just mm -hmm. a month-to-month -month deal. Mm -hmm. uh, with uh, Univision, uh, I had a signed contract. We went to court, and they paid a substantial amount of money to me. To settle? Yes. And um, what was your understanding of the reason for Univision terminating the relationship with you? I guess they didn't like my comments. Mm -hmm. I think they made a mistake. I think they feel they might have made a mistake, but you'll have to ask them. Mm -hmm. But I guess they didn't like my comments. Mm -hmm. And is the um, same the case with NBC? Uh, well, NBC wanted to renew me on The Apprentice, mm -hmm. but I told them I can't do it. Uh, but they did, you know, the, the Miss Universe was not nearly as important to them. Um, but NBC, uh, that, that all worked out very well. I, I don't know exactly what their reasoning was, but I can tell you they wanted to renew me very badly on The Apprentice. Um, but it was you who said, not doing that? I couldn't do it because I was doing this. There are only so many hours in the day? It, well, uh, you also have the equal time provisions. In other words, right, yeah. I'm Got not it. allowed, essentially, I'm not allowed to Got do it. a show and, right. 
and run for office. Free advertising. Which is, I think, unfair, but it's one of those things. And also, it, it is a time thing, but I, uh, but you do actually have a legal reason as to why you can't do it. You would have to give every other candidate equal time, meaning two hours of primetime television. And I have a feeling they wouldn't like that. <laughs> Probably not. Um, you also had a relationship with CERTA. Yes, Mattress. What was the, ma what the nature of the relationship with CERTA? I just want to jump in and just caution the witness to the extent that what you're being asked might intrude upon confidentiality agreements or... Okay, fine. Yes. Um, you had a relationship with CERTA? Uh, yes. Contractual? Yes. And CERTA pulled out of that relationship in the wake of your campaign comments as well, Well, there was correct? no extension or something, yes. And did you have any understanding of what their reason for wanting to? Not particularly. I wasn't involved in it too much. Did it cause you any concern that all of these entities wanted to apparently distance themselves from you in the wake of your comments? No, I'm a big boy. I understand. Mm -hmm. I've been making these statements, by the way, for many years. This is not just new. You know, this isn't uh, when your client signed his lease, uh, my views were out there very, very strongly. Well, you would agree with me, wouldn't you, Mr. Trump, that they've gotten a lot more press in the last year? No. I, I mean, maybe more, but, I, I, you know, I can tell you that, again, some people will do better because of it. Mm -hmm. And maybe some people won't. I can't answer that. but. But some people will do better. But I've been making, I've been very strong on these, I've been very consistent. I've been very strong on the things that I said for, for years. Debbie, will we have a moment to take a quick? I would, I would be grateful. Okay, great. Thank you.